to reap knowing you in the name of jesus christ to pray amen seek to prosper some three years ago i was talking with um, one of our brothers in our former station and he shared an experience that he had that changed his life completely this brother within three years lost three jobs he got his first job and then um, after nine months he lost that job he got a second job which did not last as much as that and then a third one after he lost that third job he was out of job for a while and um, he had a lot of issues there was need for him to renew his rentage every year even though he did not have a job there was need for him to continue to eat and clothe himself he had an old mother in the village who had done his, her best without their father to bring them up and so he also felt that he was owing he needed to take care of a mother together with his two other siblings but here he was without a job and so he was obviously very worried after staying for a long period of time without a job he decided to talk to one of our pastors about it the pastor then was um, seven in this conference Port Harcourt Rivers Conference at that, that time but no longer in Port Harcourt Conference now so he decided to talk to him as he went and spoke to the pastor about his frustrations about his pain about the trouble that he was facing he told me the pastor was quietly listening to him keenly then when he finished the pastor said brother the, the problem is with you not with God that struck him because he didn't know what he did not do right at the moment but the pastor said to him it's been your problem not God's problem and he said pastor how do you mean and then the pastor said the problem with this your job was that it was your job it was not your job and God's job it was just your job so you could lose it at any time as much as any other person could lose his job and he said pastor I don't, I don't still get you then the pastor said when you want to get a new job like you are praying now you remind God that you see you don't have accommodation you need to have accommodation you remind God, you see, my old mother is in the village. She needs to be taken care of. You remind God, you see, my siblings, you see, my family, I need to do this. You remind God that your mates are doing better and you're not doing anything. But you don't tell God how this job is going to benefit him. And so even when you get a job, you will be on your own. And the pastor said, I, I also suspect that the times you were working, you were doing that job like your job. You were not doing that job like you own that job with God God was possibly not benefiting much from that job and so you could lose it and he said when the pastor said that it came to him that yeah pastor is correct he remembered that even while he was doing the job he was not faithful with his giving he remembered that while he was doing that job he did not do any tangible thing to touch the life of the church or any other member apart from himself his sibling his mother his rentage his clothes his it was about him and never about god and he said the pastor was right then the pastor said to him now go back and ask god to bring tell him lord i want us to have a job and lord see how this job is going to benefit you when it comes lord see the lives of people that i want to touch in the church who are not my siblings when this job comes lord see that other woman on the streets that i move i see every day i want to touch her life she's not my family member i don't know her but i want that job you are bringing to touch her life lord see the project i want to be involved in in church when this job comes lord see the things i want to do for you lord i want to be faithful in my returns and then you can add lord i also need an accommodation too Lord, me too, I will also need to take care of my mother. He said, now go back and ask the Lord to bring that job. 
so that you and him will partner in that job and then watch and see what the Lord will do. He said he walked out of that place that day being convinced that the pastor was right because he couldn't see how his previous opportunities benefited God. Apart from the fact that he was eating and wearing clothes and meeting up and, and paying his rent and doing like others. He could not really hold on to anything that he did for God during that period. Now he went back and he said he began to pray. The pastor told him, the Lord is going to visit you again. It may not be now. It may not be tomorrow. But when he is sure that you are sincere about your requests, then the Lord will visit you. Four months after he got a job, and then he began with that job. The job had an allowance for him to work two weeks and then two weeks out. He got a second job that he was to do within these other two weeks. And he began to combine the two. And by the time we left uh, my former station, he had done that job for some years. And by God's grace, he is still doing the job. I laid a foundation for his house somewhere around the um, a warfare side um, as if you want to go from a warfare to a that road i laid a foundation there before we left it was a story building and uh, by last year when i met the wife in my three premises I, I i don't know whether it was armor meeting or something that took me there and she was also she came around she told me the husband was not around but she said ah pastor we have moved into that facility they are done with that job and they are living there for years now. Since he prayed his prayer, adding God. Since he asked God, let me partner with you in this my job. Since he made a clear explanation of how that job was going to benefit God. Then God came down and answered. For when that job that you have gotten will benefit the cause of God. And the lives of others apart from you and your siblings and your mother and your friends and your house when that job has a potential to benefit god then god will sustain it if your new appointment if your new promotion is going to benefit god and the church of god and the project of god then god will sustain it if your job is going to benefit others in church and elsewhere, apart from your family, and the cause of God, then you can be sure that when they compile the names of those who are going to be laid off, your name will not be there. But if your name will be there, then the Lord is pushing you out to take you to another place that will be higher. Because that's your job is benefiting Him. Brothers and sisters, we are selfish by nature. So we like to receive. We do not want to give out. And when we ask, we ask only on that selfish intention about us, about my child, about my sister, about my father, about my mother, about my house, about my new project, about my new career. It's always about us. And if God is not in it, then there's a problem in it. Brothers and sisters, today I'm challenging you to seek to prosper. And if you must prosper, then you must obey the principles that underlie prosperity. For everything that God gives to us, everything that God does for us, that's a principle that we have to obey. And every time you obey those principles, you can be sure that you can go to sleep. For instance, you know that you can pray from morning to morning, from year to year without answers. If that prayer lacks faith apart from lacking a component that god will benefit but if he lacks faith in matthew chapter 21 verse 22 the bible tells us something matthew 21 verse 22 the bible says whatever you ask okay it's on screen already and all things whatsoever you ask in prayer believing you shall receive amen so the key line there the principle when we ask is believing the key line there that we have to understand every time we ask is faith. If we ask without believing, that's what it means, we shall not receive. If we ask without faith, we shall not receive. Likewise also, prosperity has its own principles. 
And those principles, the principle for prosperity is clearly laid out in the Bible. If you want to prosper, then you must follow that line. Just like you want to get answers to your prayer, you have to follow the line, um, the principle that underlies prayer. I need to take you back to the life of two persons in the Bible who prospered. And one of them is in Genesis chapter 14, 19 to 20. And we will find that prosperity, that principle of prosperity there. Genesis 14, 19 to 20. And we know this man, Abraham, and um, we will see what he was doing that caused him to prosper more than others. Genesis chapter 14, verse 19, the Bible says, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Verse 20, let's go to verse 20, and he says, And blessed be the Most High, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Amen. Abraham was a man whom the Lord prospered. We have read about him, we've heard his story, but one thing that was different from what Abraham was doing, that many others that did not prosper were not doing, was that Abraham always returned a tenth of whatever the Lord gave to him. The word tithe means one tenth or a tenth of all that you have received. Now, away from the life of Abraham, we also see another man, Jacob, whom the Lord also blessed. We find that in Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 to 22, we find this man, Jacob. And we see also how he followed that principle. In Genesis chapter 28, from verse 20, the Bible says, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Verse 21, So that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Amen. Amen. Verse 22 and the last, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and all of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. Amen. Amen. So Jacob was also a man who followed the same principle that Abraham followed. And the Lord prospered him. The principle for prosperity, brothers and sisters, is giving. If you have learned how to return back that which belongs to the Lord, then you can be sure that you will prosper. Because the promises of the Lord are sure and we can trust that many persons would love to receive but not to give but by giving you know us by giving you know a man it was john Mason who said that one way to know a man is by what he says another way to know a man is by what he does but the best way to know a man is by what he gives and i believe that is correct that is why god would not just say you see i love you with an everlasting love but god himself gave so that he will reveal to us that he is love the bible tells us in john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he did what that he gave his only begotten son and by giving god announced to us that he was not just a god of love but that he himself was love. The Bible says, God is love. And so, brothers and sisters, God expects to know us. He expects to find out how much we value him, not just by saying it and singing, not just by attending church, but by what we give. When we give to others, we show that we love. When we give to God, we show that we love him. But when we give to God, we do something more than just showing that we love him. To explaining, demonstrating that all we have and all we are belongs to God. That's why Abraham and Jacob and all the patras that we find in the Bible were men and women who gave. For by giving, we say unto God, we love you. By giving, we say unto God, we believe 
that you are God and that all we have and all we are belongs to you this is why Moses by inspiration will have to write in Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30 up to verse 34 will have to put this down by the instruction of the Lord Leviticus 27 30 to 34 and it says and all the tithes of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's it is holy unto the Lord verse 31 and if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes he shall add thereof or thereto the fifth part thereof it means that every time you set the tithe of the Lord apart and for any reason you go back to use it when you want to bring it back to the Lord it shall no longer be what you, you took you are going to add a fifth of that tithe that you have removed that is how serious and how important it is verse 32 and concerning the tithe of a herd of a flock even of whatsoever person under the rod the tent shall be holy unto the Lord the Lord continues to say the tent shall be holy unto the Lord and in verse 33 he shall not search whether it be good or bad neither shall he change it and if he change it at all then both it and the change thereof shall be holy it shall not be redeemed verse 34 and the last these are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel at Mount Sinai the same way the Ten Commandments the moral law was brought to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai the same way the Lord will have to speak about that which belongs to him in fact even the pastors the Levites were not excluded from returning their tithes so it's not meant for some persons it's meant for everyone who wants to demonstrate that we love God and who wants to demonstrate that God is the owner of our lives and everything that we have numbers chapter 18 verse 26 let's see how the Lord explains that numbers 18 verse 26 and numbers 18 verse 26 he says toss speak unto the Levites and say unto them unto the pastors when you shall take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance then ye shall offer up and heave offering of it for the Lord even a tenth part of the tithe. pastors are paid from the tithe as people return the tithe it's pulled down it's taken to the conference and then from there pastors are paid but even when you have received your tithe from that, those tithes that have been your, your salary from those tithes that have been returned the Lord says one tenth of all you have received should also be returned to the Lord so no one is excluded when it comes to giving to the Lord that which belongs to him brothers and sisters our tithe is not a gift to the Lord it's a debt that we owe you, you don't give it to the Lord like you are doing the Lord any good but it's to show that we know that God himself is the one who gives the power for us to make words he is the one who gives us a life and the strength and the wisdom for us to make words so we return back that which we're owing and that is why in malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 9 the bible says when we withhold our tithes and offering we make ourselves robbers since it is not a gift that we're giving to the lord it is that which belongs to the lord when we withhold it we make ourselves robbers and in malachi chapter 3 verse 8 the bible will say will a man rob god yet you have robbed me but ye say wherein have we robbed thee and then he goes on to answer he says in tithes and offerings amen many of us brothers and sisters have gone on to rob god in tithes and offerings and you know what when we do that we run the risk of messing our lives up when israel abandoned the returning of their tithes when many of them during the years that they had a lot of issues a lot of communion with idols and with idol worship they forgot their covenant with god they forgot their responsibilities in the house of god and the result was that the lord allowed them to be taken 
into captivity. The Babylonians came and carried all of them and they became slaves in the land of Babylon. Today, brothers and sisters, many of us have made ourselves slaves because we will refuse to return that which belongs to the Lord. Or yes, we may dress and look beautiful in church. Or yes, we may still look like all is well. But there are those who are in this congregation and those who are hearing me from wherever who are owing so heavily. Even if we do our work, we do business, but our life is just not going as it should be. Check yourselves, brothers and sisters. You may have robbed God and you may just be in captivity. Captivity is a land of humiliation. Some of us have faced humiliation out of the debts we owe. People call you on phone, knock at your door, complain here and there because you are owing, whereas you were supposed to have prospered if you had remained faithful. Check your lives, brothers and sisters. You may not have been faithful. For if you are faithful, then the Lord will stay true to his promises. The Lord has always done that. And you can trust that he will do it always. Captivity is a land of shame. Some of us brothers and sisters have faced shame. Because we cannot pay for where we stay. We cannot even eat well and take care of the things we should take. I'm talking to you who is following via the social media or from wherever. And what you are going through now, you should never have gone through if you had remained faithful. That was the story of the Israelites. They abandoned the precepts of God, the laws of God, and they went their own way. And the result was poverty and frustration and shame and humiliation. The result was a life of struggle in the land of foreigners. That's what many persons who have abandoned the law of God are currently doing. And that is why, brothers and sisters, when Nehemiah, finally we find in Nehemiah chapter 10, that story of Nehemiah rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. You remember Nehemiah and Ezra. When they returned to rebuild the city of Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, and when the people finally settled, one of the first things they did was to reinstitute the giving of tithe, faithful tithing and faithful return of those offerings because they knew that it was the reason why the Lord scattered them abroad and why they were humiliated. Today, brothers and sisters, have you, have you experienced shame and humiliation? Have you experienced the troubles that come from not staying faithful to God? The Lord wants us today to examine our lives. He wants us today to look at ourselves again and see where we have not done well. In Haggai chapter 1, I have some very fearful information that I, when I, every time I see it, I, I get worried. In Haggai chapter 1, from verse 3, the Lord says, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, we're reading up to verse 6. Verse 4 it says, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses. And this house lie waste. The house of the Lord lie waste. Now therefore, thus said the Lord of... Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. The Lord is saying to us, Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. Let me pause there. Many of us have sown much, but we bring in little. We struggle morning to morning. We do all the things that we should do that every other person is doing. But the result is not as much as our struggle. We bring in little. But ye have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages... And it wages to put into a bag with holes. Wow. The Lord says, when we withhold that which we should return to him, we will struggle so much, but we will bring in little. And the last line says, we will earn wages, but we will put those wages into a bag with what? With holes. As you earn and put, it goes off. Some will go off through police case. Other ones will go up through sickness. 
Some will go up through the open hole through burial. God forbid. Some other ones will go up through problems here and there. A sister was talking to me some one year ago. She says they've been struggling to change their car, but every time they want to change that car, there's always one burial that comes up. Every time they want to change, there's always one burial. And I said, maybe the Lord is putting a hole on your pocket. And he says, what do you mean, pastor? And I said, have you been faith faithful in your returns? And then she paused for a moment. And uh, that pause answered that question. But last week, just last week, because two weeks ago, in our church in the Lily War, we dedicated their car. Because by God's grace, she had to go home to make amends, and the Lord sealed up those holes. We dedicated a new car. It's the eighth car we are dedicating in the past two years. And I just said in a little one last week that there's no coronavirus. Because within this period, we have dedicated three cars and things are happening. So there's no coronavirus. Not that it's not there, but I mean the economic effect is not affecting us. But they have sealed the holes because they have come back to do what they are supposed to do. Maybe you are carrying an empty hole, an open hole. Maybe you are carrying a, an open bag. Today, the Lord wants you to go back and consider your ways and seal up those holes so that when you earn money, you can use the money. The promise of the Lord is that there will be no devourers that will devour what you have earned after giving that which belongs to him, after partnering with him. Some years ago, one of our members in my three church lost his car. I don't know if I have told you that story here. And then somehow he called me. It was on a Friday evening. They were going home after their um, after Vespa service. And he called me and he said, Pastor, my, my car has been taken. And he explained. And we thank the Lord for safety because that car was snatched on his streets along um, Ada George Road on, on gunpoint. But he came to church the next day and I said, We have prayed. But, but we need to pray as a church so that the Lord will bring the car back. Uh, and then he smiled. Elder Jueleke, you know him. I'm calling his name because people are also following him online. And, and he smiled and he said, Elder, uh, Pastor, no need for that. And I said, no, we, we can just pray. Said, Pastor, no need. The Lord is going to bring the car back. And then he said, myself and my family, we sat down last night and the first thing we did was to search whether we have eaten that which belongs to the Lord. And we concluded that we have not. And we have challenged the Lord. And we have told him, Lord, you don't bring back this car. That your word is not true. Because you have said, there will no devourer that will devour what we have in after we have given your own. If you don't bring back this car, then your word is not true. I said, Pastor, don't bother disturbing the church to start praying and distorting the program. Because the Lord will bring the car back. They know the person I'm talking about. I said the Lord will bring the car. And then the Lord made some provision. That car didn't come back that month. But the Lord made some provision. And they got another small car. And they began to manage. Brothers and sisters. That car after some months. Was discovered in Kaduna. The people who, were, who, who stole the car. They had parked it somewhere drinking. And because the thing had been. I don't know how police tracked them. They rounded them off. And they brought that car back to my train. Today, as I talk to you, that family is still making use of the car. He said to me, Pastor, don't, don't, worry, don't need bothering this church setting. We start praying and then disturbing the church worship. Because the Lord will bring the car back. Did the Lord bring it back? Yes, he did. That car is there today. You can call anyone you know there and ask. And that car came back. It's a Corolla, a black Corolla car. The car returned back. Because they searched themselves and they saw that there was no, no need for there to be an open bag, an open pocket. They searched themselves and they saw that there was no need for devourers to devour what they have earned. And they could say, Pastor, don't bother distorting this worship, praying. That one is a waste of time. We have already told the Lord, if the car doesn't return, then the word of the Lord is not true. But Pastor, because the word of the Lord is true, that car will return. And today, that car is there. Brothers and sisters, what you are suffering right now may be due to unfaithfulness. It may be that you are eating your own and eating God's own and nobody ever prospers doing that. When you do that, you bring a cost to yourself. The Lord creates a hole in your pocket. 
And you know, friends, the fearful thing about it, and that's why when I get any money, I have an envelope, I put it there. When I get any money by hand, I put it there. As any money enters my account, I am calculating. Because if it is short of one-tenth, it is no longer tight. If you are supposed to return 90,000 Naira and you return 89,000, you will lose that 89,000 and lose the promise that would have come. Because until it is 90,000, it is not your tight. Do you understand that, brothers and sisters? That's how bad it is. But the truth is that if you do that, then the Lord will sustain you. Today, brothers and sisters, are you carrying a, a bag, a, 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 an open bag around? Is the Lord dealing with you for your unfaithfulness? Are you eating the tithe of the Lord and his offering? You come to church and you just sit down, you join, enjoy the fun. Maybe in the past one month, you have not contributed. You enjoy the life. If the, the, if, um, the gen is not on, you can, ah, what's happening now? Why is the gen not on? Maybe in the past three, four months, you have not contributed reasonably to the stability of this church financially. Not only are you robbing God and robbing yourself of your blessings, but you are also depriving the church of the means to do mission. The Lord is not happy with us. See what the Lord says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 9. Malachi chapter 3 verse 9. That's another fearful text. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 9, it says, verse 9, it says, you are cursed with a curse. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even the whole nation. When the Lord pronounces curse upon anyone, then you can't find success anywhere. If the Lord has pronounced curse upon anyone, you will struggle in vain. But you know what, friends? There's a promise that he gives as we go down. Verses 10 to 12. Verses 10 to 12. As we go down. The, the Lord says here, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not room enough to receive it. Amen. Verse 11, it says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Amen. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time. In the field, said the Lord. Amen. Verse 12, and that's going to be the Lord. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. Prove me now, the Lord says, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. During this beginning of uh, the lockdown period for the coronavirus, we, everyone was in need of money to stock some things, right? And for some reasons, because of school and all this and all that, I, I really didn't have money. But as we have done by His grace, we decided to lay as the money dropped, the money that even came, most times you discover that when you make money, when you get your offerings, when you get your salary, sometimes the need that you have around you are more than even the money that has come in. I don't know whether you have that experience sometimes. You have a lot of need. You have to pay this. You have to do that, do that. But the money that you have just gotten from that business, from that contract, it has landed in your hand, but it's not even enough to take care of all the things you want to do. So how do you, how do you begin to share it? But it requires faith to take that. One of my, my uncles in my home church used to tell me, he says, long ago he used to be very unfaithful with his tithes and offering. But he discovered that when he uses that one that belongs to God, and uses his own together to try to solve his problem, he says the problem still don't end. There's always another thing to do the next month. There's always something that is still waiting. There is another thing to be attended to. They don't end. So he said to himself, what's the need still stealing from God since these things were not ending? And then he learned to be faithful. But he said, as he became more faithful in his tithes and giving, then the Lord began to take care of those other challenges. Amen. During this period, brothers and sisters, I'll share with you this personal testimony. We, we just gave what we should give to the Lord and prayed. I said, Lord, we are doing this because 
that's your own. Please sustain us. And one morning I got an alert. And that alert was coming from someone that um, we didn't say anything, we didn't talk anything. I, she didn't not even ask me for my bank account. And I was wondering how that came. So I called her a couple of times. She was not taking the call. And then she sent me a message. And she said, good morning, pastor. I will not take your call. He said, I know you are surprised. I am too. Are you following that? I'm reading a text message, a message from my WhatsApp platform. He said, I am too. And he said, last week, God reminded me in my dream that he made a covenant with you that he will always provide. And then a few other things that she said. But let me go towards the ending part of that thing. He says, he spoke to me about a lot of things. But the final instruction was clear. He said to me, he said, he said, send this money to Solomon, my servant. And I asked, why not into the church account? Then he said to me, you have already returned your tithes and your offering. Send it to my servant. So I obeyed. And then he said, pastor, God bless your ministry. It was coming from someone that I least expected. 75,000 Naira. Very early in the morning, like 6 a.m. Are we sending me 75,000 Naira this morning? We didn't have anything. This could be a mistake or something. And then I began to call back that number, but she would not take. And then she, she sent me this message and said, Pastor, I won't take your call. I know you are surprised, but I am also surprised. And whatever she had in her dream, it said, it was clear the Lord said, send this money to my servant and the exact amount when pastor richard walking said some three years ago when he was dedicating his his um his book he was launching his book that he was in his office someone brought about three hundred thousand naira and said that god told him in his dream to send this money to pastor richard walking i i didn't doubt it but it was strange to me because uh, you know how it looks it was strange he said, he talked to the person to know. He, Are you sure this is not your tithe? This is not. He said, no, no. Pastor, no. God told me the exact amount. And he said, bring it to me. And here I shared this testimony with my wife that morning. We had just given our tithe and offering. We did not know how the, the month was going to run. But that's what God said. And he says, when you do that, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. And we have just believed that. And brothers and sisters, 75K. And he said, the Lord said to me, send it to my servant. And I even argued and said, why not church account? He said, you have already returned your tithe and offering. Send it to my servant, Solomon. And he said, I obeyed. I'm challenging you today, friends. The way to prosperity is the way of obedience. The way to prosperity is not the way of robbery. If you must prosper, then that's your job or business must benefit God and benefit you. If you must move away from all these troubles you have now, currently, then friends, you need to consider faithfulness. Unfortunately, many of us have been unfaithful. Many of us have continued to eat that which belongs to God and that which belongs to, to, to us together. And sometimes when we should return 10,000 naira, we return 3,000. Sometimes when we should return 70,000, we return 20,000. Of course, when it's 20,000, it's bulky. The church does not know, but God knows that it is not complete. And you will continue to lose that which belongs to the Lord. I know what it takes sometimes when I want to do a transfer to the church account, to my um, account, my, my tight account. I know what it takes. Sometimes when you look at the need and you look at the things you have to do and you look at the money, it's just not enough. But friends, we have to trust God at his word. If God has said it, then we should believe it. And let me tell you one thing I have always told people and I'm going to end with that. If you try a life of faithfulness in giving today, my tithes and my offering, I'm going to return faithfully. Whether the money is there or not. If you try that life of giving, 
And after 90 days, nothing has changed. Then stop. If you try that life of giving, and after 90 days, things still remain the way they are, like that. God is not showing forth. Nothing is happening. Then stop. Now, when I say this, I provoke God because he knows that I am making this, I'm throwing this challenge in his name, using his word. He says he will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. I'm challenging you today. Can you make a change in your life and save yourself some of the pains that you have experienced? Can we say today, as I get this money, this is my tithe, this is my offering. How can the church of God be starving sometimes when God has all of us? And sometimes we can't do some little things because there's no money. And there are people dressing well, buying their shoes, doing their things, changing their furniture at home, sending their children to school, and the church of God is starving. What kind of a life? And then we come back to him and say, Lord, please bless us. So the Lord is the one who will continue to bless. But we will not bless his cause. Today we need to change that tide. We need to make a covenant, a new covenant with the Lord. We need to return back to him. The word of the Lord says, the last Bible verse we're reading today, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 20, and I'll take 33, and that's my last verse today. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 33. That's the last. Can we read this together? Let's go and read it together, everyone. But seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Can we say today, Lord, we have lived our lives in selfishness. We have done only the things that benefit us. We have eaten your own and eaten our own. The result is that the church is starving. And we also are starved of your blessings. But Lord, today we want to lay up our treasures in heaven. We want to seek your kingdom first, no matter what it is. And then, Lord, we want to experience your blessings. Is anybody saying that today? I would love to pray with you as I invite you to stand up. If that is your prayer. Shall we take time to bow and talk to God? Talk to him to have mercy on you. Talk to him to help you develop a life of faithfulness. Faithfulness in giving. Faithfulness in seeking his cause. And pursuing his kingdom only and his righteousness. So that all other things can be added to you. Make that prayer this moment. And I will close. Dear loving Father, we thank you today that you have opened our eyes again so that we can search our lives and know if we are still being faithful to you or if we are being selfish. You have opened our eyes today so that we can see that by robbing you, we also rob ourselves of our blessings. But Lord, your children have made a new covenant with you today to always return that which belongs to you to always bring your tithes and your offerings faithfully so that Lord there will be meat in your house and so that Lord there will be abundant blessings in the lives of your children cause us Lord to stay with this covenant we have made today that Lord as we go home as we return next week as we continue to worship you week after week Lord you will begin to prosper your children I have made a challenge today in your name 
that anyone who stays true in giving for 90 days without any changes should quit. But Lord, wherever I have thrown this challenge, you have never allowed them to quit. You have only allowed them to come back to say, Pastor, thank you. Let this also be the experience in this place. That as your people return to you in faithfulness, Lord, you will return to us. And Lord, your blessings will be so abundant in our lives that people will see and testify. Bless your church today and help those who are struggling with meager means, little businesses, and some who are praying and looking up to you for job. That Lord, that job will come. Especially now that we have decided that the job will ask from you, the business will ask from you, the contract will ask from you, will first benefit you, and then we too can also be beneficiaries. Thank you, Lord, for we know you will do more than we have asked today. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.